Okay, how's it going guys? Today we're going to be measuring the main bearing clearances on this 2.4 liter crankshaft. The crankshaft here has been turned one hundredth of an inch and it's been balanced with uh, the ATI super dampener and an ACT flywheel as well as the billet tone wheel. So it's, uh, it's pretty ready to go as far as performance standards. I mean, these cranks have been proven to handle quite a bit of power. As long as the bed plate is strapped, you shouldn't have any problems. Even though the crank may flex a little bit at 8,000 RPMs and on up. But other than that, they're pretty stout crankshaft. So uh, let's get started. Alright, so the tools that we'll need today to measure the main bearing clearances are going to be a 2 to 3 inch micrometer and you want it to read to a ten thousandth of an inch, one ten thousandth of an inch. Alright, and then we're going to need a dial bore gauge and you're going to want to have paper to record all your measurements. And I'm going to be measuring the crank on two axes. You're going to have an outside which is the side of the bearing that's closest to the front of the engine and you're going to have an inside which is going to be the innermost portion. And the Y axis is going to be running straight up and down with the rods which are here. So straight in line with this line here and then X is going to measure that way. So I've already got 2.3 written because I know they're going to fall within 2.3 something because the stock journal measures in at 2.3625. Now I already know this micrometer is off half a thousandth so I have to make sure that I do the math and subtract that from each crankshaft main journal diameter that I get. Alright, so we're going to need to set the micrometer up with the proper attachments here. So we know we're dealing with a 2.3 inch measurement, so we'll go ahead and get this 2.2 inch anvil here, as well as some of these little spacers that are included. I already measured this one and it measures the 0.1187 so I already accounted that and it doesn't really matter and then we're also going to need this 0 0.04 here and that'll bring us slightly larger than the main bearing clear, uh, journal diameter you're also going to need a way to secure the micrometer and I don't have a bench or a table vise in here so I'm just going to use a C-clamp and some paper towels to help protect the micrometer and I'm just going to mount it on the edge of this table here to where it sticks out and I can zero my bore gauge off of it.
All right guys, so far we're looking really good. That is a one zero. A few of these I had to remeasure. It's a one two. So we're all within plus or minus one to two ten thousandths of an inch some of these mains were perfect you can't really expect all of them to be perfect with the turned crank if it was a stock crank i would expect everything to be good but this is what our clearances are looking like so far which is perfect this is two and a half thousandths uh, it's bigger than stock recommendations but this is not a stock application generally with higher rev limits and higher horsepower with this with a cast steel crank you want slightly bigger clearances so we're looking real good let's keep measuring So the blueprinting process is definitely not rocket science, it's just really taking the time to measure everything and documenting it on paper or typing it. And generally, I mean, you want all your numbers to be the same across the board, but you're not always going to get that. And that's okay, as long as they're, you know, very close and you're just kind of creating a picture of the out of roundness and the taper and the main reason I didn't get the X measurements is because these bearings are eccentric bearings so they're oval shaped and they're tighter on the Y axis than they are on the X axis so the numbers really are not going to give me anything and I mean I check them but they're always going to be far out of the y-axis spec but it's important to document the x-axis of the crank just to check for out of roundness and I mean these numbers they could be slightly user error they might well be all the same I've just kind of just went through each one one time and that's what I got I'm sure if I went through them four or five times which is a good idea to go through everything multiple times and I may just do that, but I'm trying to move along and get this engine put together as quick as possible to keep corrosion and dirt to a minimum. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up and uh, get ready to measure the rod bearings tomorrow. And after that, we'll be checking piston to bore clearance and various other clearances. And we should be ready to clean the motor and start assembling final final assembly